Hi, this is Susan Carlson and welcome to my studio. Learn about selecting and cutting fabrics for fabric collage in this following video. And one of my go-to types of fabrics are batiks, but it's not just the dyed batiks, it's printed batiks. And you can see that these four designs, it was really hard just narrowing it down to the four, but they have very distinctive patterns to them. They're patterns that I can cut around. And that's what I find very helpful when I'm working on my work. If it's a fish, a dog, a cat, a person, doesn't really matter. I'm looking for patterns in the fabric. For fish, you know, anything swirly, we've got some spiky stuff there. Like just look over here on the right-hand side, like right there, this, this um, fern fabric, if I were to cut this down a little farther, and just kind of cut right along in here. I mean, look at that, that's a fin right there. So right going down the back of that fish. And those are the type of things I'm looking for. I'm also looking for fabrics that can blend nicely one next to the other. On the bottom left photograph, you can see how I've cut around these designs. So I'll point it out here and then we'll just kind of, you know, breeze through some of the other ones. but. Instead of cutting straight through a design and giving myself a, you know, a, a, a cut of fabric, like a, you know, cut off a triangle, cut out, cut off a corner of each one of these fabrics. As I'm cutting off a corner, I am taking time and kind of working my way around the pattern. Okay, see something like that. You can see how I cut each one of these things. I'm not cutting out an individual um, butterfly per se. So here, like right there, that butterfly right in the center down there, that's just a partial butterfly. What I've cut around is the color or the, the, the value, a lightness or darkness. If I can see that, that's what I'm gonna cut around. If I can't see it, I'll cut along the pattern. That's why having a pattern fabric is really important because it gives you these interesting cuts. Because then if you look over here on the right-hand side, when I put those cuts together, like look what's happening right down in here. I just very quickly on each of these um, fabric examples, I put them together real kind of quick. And right there, look what's happening. The greens are, of the flowers are blending with the greens of the butterfly and the and the pinks of the butterfly are starting to blend with the with the kind of pink and orange of the 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 wavy pattern there. So things start happening very quickly. If I was just to slash a straight line across or not cut to the pattern, there wouldn't be that sort of blending and melding that happens immediately. If you're going to cut these things out anyway, just put a little extra time into cutting along the pattern and you'll save yourself that time later. And you'll also be able to see exactly how things start looking as you cut them, you can lay them down and it just, all of it just comes together in your head. So these are K-facet fabrics, of course, again, very, just four of them. <laughs> so as you're looking at your fabrics, I'm gonna show you 31, I have 30, I have, I have 10 slides with 30 fabrics on them, you know, total. And I have a huge amount of fabric cut, just a single, you know, one or two pieces of each that are gonna take me through many fish, not just one fish, but I'd be able to do many fish. So if you're looking at 100 or 50 pieces of fabric, bring them down, okay? I say 15 to 20. I'm giving you trying trying to give you a really good example. So I've got 30 of them, but still, you know, as you see, I looked at all my K-facet fabrics and I picked four. So all of these, I think you can see where I'm getting an idea where my, they might be fishy because I've got my subject in mind. I don't know where I'm going to use them. Maybe I don't even know what pattern I'm going to use, but that's okay. If you look at the upper right one here, uh, right here, that, um, a uh, succulent plant looks very much like scales, doesn't it? So why not cut some of it? Um, the one in here looks very fin-like. You know, here's here's some that are cut down, very much like fins. I might be able to use it. Um, this one here, 
quite interesting as far as maybe gills or something like that. But I don't, I don't know. I'm just thinking they look kind of fishy. So why not just cut them out, put them in the pile, see what happens. And here, this is another designer, um, Jane Sassaman. She makes these really big, bold designs. And, um, you know, who knows? I can cut these, these patterns up and make something pretty cool out of it. We'll see. I really love this lily that she's got up there. This has got all sorts of designs and possibilities, just cutting apart those petals. There's got the, the leaves behind it the the fabric that here on the left hand side that one right there i mean any part of that could be a really interesting um back fin moving across uh you know who the the shape you know the 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 fish um big leaves you can see the one down here in the center look at that big leaf there um, let's see, Deborah asks, I've loved Jane Sassman prints, but just never knew how to use. Now I see how to use in collage. Yes. Yep. I've used them for years. Some of the, the one up here with the little polka, polka dots in it went into my polka, polka dodo, um, back in like 2006 or something. I've, 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 I've admired her stuff for a long time. We'll go in. Yes. Aboriginal prints. So Australian Aboriginal fabrics. Another kind of fabric that we just love, we collect, maybe not sure how to use, but look at how they come together. The upper left photograph right up here, those are the fabrics. Lower left here, I've cut them out. They're a big print. If you've got a big print, um, I, I will tell people when you cut a palette to use your hand as a guide. But if you're using Aboriginal prints or Jane Sassaman prints or possibly African prints, all those big, bold things. Why don't you just put like two hands together and cut a piece you know, that kind of has that really nice flow to it. You don't want to break that up because I'm going to encourage you to go big on your fish. I've got one that fits on my board and works well for presentation. But, you know, if you want to go really big, like the guy behind me, that red fish is about... I don't know, maybe three feet um, wide, um, long. So that's not that's not too big. You'll you'll see once you start going, you want to have something big to play with some of these patterns. And on the far right, the photograph when I put these Aboriginal prints together, that commonality they have all have that black in them, the black background. They just start blending really nice. So that's another thing to look for in your fabrics. Look for in your fabrics, it's like a common background color um, if, if the theme starts coming together. And I noticed that just as I was picking out my fabrics, I was getting a bit of a theme. There was yellows, there were some blacks, there were greens, a little bit of red here and there, but they all kind of went together really nice. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to starting to play with them. And then we've got the African print fabrics. And these are very bold, very um, graphic looking, but just take a look here, this middle one, that, um, that I mean, those are scales. That's, a, that's like a fish, you know, swimming by right there in front of us. And the there's this one here that's kind of, kind of scaly looking, but then flowers and, and leaves are really fun to use too. I love cutting them up and then cutting them apart and they can be rearranged or make really good, um, again, fins and tails. And then there's this fabric right in the center. Um, there's that one, it's right over here too. I'm on the upper right now circling. And that fabric has a little bit of gold in it, like a metallic gold. So I've got two fabrics with a little bit of metallic gold in it. One, this African print, and another one is just kind of like a general novelty print, I would call it. And so if those start working, I can then go into my, my fabric stash and look for more. So that's the thing that you want to keep in mind as you are looking through your fabrics, is that you don't have to find everything right now. You just have to get started. And so here's a very general um, kind of, again, my novelty selection of stuff. 
Um, but this is, is my start. So it might be after I've selected the fabrics and I've cut them into to pieces. Here you can see those fabrics cut into pieces. I've cut it, them into chunks, you know, some a little smaller, some a little bigger. They're all meant to cut down farther as I start working, but they will be a nice size for me to move around. They're not like this big yardage that I'm trying to, you know, maneuver anywhere. And I've already done some of the thinking. I've, I've selected some things. I've cut some things. I'm ready to go and try them. Some of them won't work and that's okay. I'll have them for another project down the road. Um, you make your best guess. And then as you start working, it might be that you were making this multicolored fish and all of a sudden, all those aquas and greens and yellows really appeal to you. And you just take off and make something you really like. And it's, you know, I don't know, three or four colors, maybe a lot of values and, and variation to them. But in general, you might be making like a red fish. See, that my, like my red fish behind that. So keep that in mind. You don't, you don't have to know exactly what you're going to use yet. And I cut all of these fabrics out just to, to have them as part of my palette, to have them to reach for and add to my fish as I'm working. And I can work very intuitively. And here now is all of those multicolored, multi-pattern stuff, you know, all kind of jumbled together and pushed together. And you can see where places where they're, they're starting to blend without me even trying to get them to blend. And that's what's really fun. And it's because I've cut into them a little bit. I've done kind of a soft cut to the outside of it. I've not, it's not like a super spiky, um, fussy cut. It's a little smoother, fussy cut but it's enough of a cut where, where I can see how they overlap together. And just a couple more of my novelty fabrics. I, I just have fun using them and putting them in here and there. Um, I did one time make a fruit bat out of all fabric, um, all fruit patterned fabrics and named fructose was the name of the bat, name of the quilt. Um, and here's a bunch of vegetables. So haven't, don't can't say I've made anything specifically vegetables, but I have them on hand if they if they start to inspire me. So I picked out a few, cut them down. We'll see if they fit anywhere. And if not for this, yeah, I'll, I'll make something with them later on. And the last one, I just returned from a trip teaching, as I said, out to Tucson, Arizona. And of course, there were opportunities to get some Arizona fabric. So I've got my cactus and the cowgirl and cut them up. And you can see on the right-hand side how they start to um, arrange themselves and start working together. I'm not sure if this will work, but if it does, I can see maybe possibly um, right here in the center over onto the far right, these sections could be cut apart, rearranged, and they could be something. They could be, again, fins coming out. They could be accents along the bottom of the fish. Oh, that might work. Like see if you can imagine these coming up from the bottom of the fish, kind of rounding out the belly of the fish. So that might be something I could try. We'll see if that, um, how that works down the road. And um, if I have something like this fabric here, um, this one has a very light background on it. So it doesn't kind of stands out from a lot of the other ones. But if you see how I went on the upper right here, how I did kind of a, little bit of a fussy cut. I'm not totally getting rid of that light background, but when I cut it down enough to get rid of a lot of that light, then it really does start blending with the other fabrics that I have in this selection that have a little bit of light in it as well. Find lots more about my fabric collage technique through my blog posts at susancarlson.com.